Hi everyone and welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial we are going to be unboxing the September perfectly pieced box and we're going to be working through one quilt block. You guys have already I've already played with the quilt blocks not from the material in the box but with my own material and this is a fun one guys. If you love fall you're gonna love this. So before I show you what I made with the quilt block I just want to talk about perfectly pieced. Perfectly pieced is a monthly subscription. You can either get just the digital format which gives you all the embroidery files or you can get the kit which has the embroidery files as well as some fun notions, thread, fabric, all kinds of goodies. It's like a little surprise, a little gift every month. Perfectly Peace comes from Me Time and it is an embroidery subscription box. So this is this is 100% embroidery. You do not need a huge embroidery machine to make these projects. I am using my beginner Brother PE800 single needle embroidery machine and I've used that for pretty much every project in this box. You can make the two inch or four inch size blocks using that machine. However, if you do want to make the bigger blocks, it goes all the way up to six and eight inch size blocks, you will need an embroidery machine that can have a hoop that's big enough to accommodate that. So as we get into September, we're getting into fall and this block at least, I haven't seen the material, but the block at least is fall inspired and I want to show you. I made four of the four inch blocks and then I just sewed them together like this. Guys, this was so fast. They literally made this this morning before, just like right before now. Like I made it this morning, got dressed, and now I'm filming. It's so quick. So this is like a little, a little treat tray. That's what I call it, a little treat tray. I like to like put this down on the table, have a little cup of coffee, a little muffin, maybe a cookie. Perfect for fall. This is the block. One quadrant of this is the block. It's like a maple leaf. It's so pretty. I particularly love the embroidery on this month's block. It was so, so cute. So I did four of these and then I just sewed them together and then I just used cork on the back. Just sandwich them like a quilt, wrong sides together. And then I just used some pre-cut one inch wide waterproof canvas binding. And then I just wrapped it around. I mean, it was so simple and it's so cute. And it's such a great little addition to like gifts. If you're gifting anything to somebody this fall and you're gonna give them, you know, some homemade cookies, maybe some like hot chocolate bombs and things like that. This is a great little project to include with that because it's cute. They're gonna keep it out all the time. So thank you so much to Me Time for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you go check out their subscription box. I'll have a link down below. Don't forget they also do the Toy C or Bella box, which is so fun. And I think we're coming up on the Bella box pretty soon. So it's right before the holidays. It's always a fun one to do. If you're new to the Oakwards YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. Any specific embroidery projects, specifically from Me Time, if you wanna see them, leave them down below. There are so many fun projects in these boxes. Besides the actual building of the quilt block and embroidering of it, they have projects, quilts, mini quilts, banners, table runners, we've made baskets, we've made drawstring backpacks. I mean, they always have really fun sewing projects that go with it. Uh, to create really cool items. So that, that's something I, I love because we're we're combining a lot of different things. We're combining embroidery and quilting and we're also doing some sometimes bag making or construction of another type of, you know, accessory. So I love this. this is just, it's just a fun way to keep your, your sojo boosted. <laughs> All right, guys, let's unbox this and make a quilt block. Okay, let's give this month's box a little sneaky peek. We open it up. Huh? September. I'm loving this color already. I I am so ready for fall. If you can't tell, I'm somebody who loves fall. So when we flip this over, it's going to give you a little rundown of everything in the box. I always like to just to just dive in. Oh, uh, we have another pin. So it seems like lately they've been doing a lot of these cute little pins that match the block. I love the colors on this. I well, now I want to make one of my little treat trays like this. This is so cool. I love how they use the different colors. Okay, that's inspiration for a future treat tray. And then we have a thread. Every month there is a different spool of thread and it's a new color. So this color is light tan. And after a few months, you have an accumulation of a lot of different colors. They're not all neutrals. They're not all pinks. Every month it's different. So you have a assortment of colorful ones and neutral ones, which is so handy. All right, let's look at the other little accessories. What is this? Okay, this looks like some ribbon. This must be for a project. Okay, so there's also like a dowel. A dowel and a, I wonder what project it is. I didn't even, I didn't see this project. I gotta look that up. And then my favorite part, the fabric. I love the fabric so much. And these colors are speaking to me. I gotta go get a coffee. I gotta go get a pumpkin spice latte. Cause look at this. 
Oh, look at these flowers. This beautiful, look at this, oranges and pinks and browns. That looks so nice together. Look at how pretty all these are. Oh, I love this neutral. And then see, and then we also have some grays and then like a, a gray bluish color. Well, I guess it's not blue, it's just gray. This is, an, a, this is just a beautiful assortment of fabric. You can make so many different designs with the layout today. And then finally in the box is a printout of the instructions. These are the same instructions you're gonna be able to get as a PDF in your digital version of the file. But if you don't wanna keep any of your computers or iPads or anything nearby, then you can just use the printout for this to piece it all together. So let's just go over some of the tools I'll be using today. You're gonna to need a hoop size that's going to fit your block, obviously. So for the two inch or four inch size blocks, I usually use this hoop right here. This is made for like a five by seven. Uh, I cannot do the six inch by six inch or the eight inch by eight inch blocks in this one. So just think about that. If you have a hoop that's bigger, then you can do the bigger box. For the stabilizer, we're gonna be using the Kimberbell Ultra Light Mesh Cutaway Stabilizer. This is the best, best stabilizer for quilt blocks. It is sturdy enough that you don't have to worry about it ripping as you're moving stuff around, as you're ironing it. It's not going to tear, anything like that. But it's also lightweight enough that when you sew a bunch of them together into a little mini quilt, it, it's easy to sew. The seams are not too thick. You don't have any bulk problems. So I highly recommend the stabilizer, especially for quilt blocks that you're doing on the inverter machine. And mini iron, as always, I just like this little Cricut one here. Curved embroidery scissors are a must, a must as is the mini iron. You will be ironing inside of this hoop. If you have a small hoop, you need a small iron. Finally, you're gonna need a small cut of batting. And the cut size of this is just gonna be dependent on the block size. The cut size is listed in the pattern, the printable and the one on the PDF. And then finally, I have just a little pressing pad. So I just keep this by my embroidery machine. And so as I pull the hoop out, you can see, I uh, pull the hoop out and as I'm ironing, I just iron it on my little pressing pad here. And the last item to mention, if you can see it, is my embroidery machine. I love this embroidery machine so much. I have an unboxing, I use it in almost every single one of my embroidery videos. It is the Brother PE800. It is an affordable beginner single needle embroidery machine. You don't have to be a technical genius in order to work this. You don't have to worry about oiling a thousand different places or anything like that. This is really a plug and play embroidery machine. You really do just plug it in and thread it and you, you get to work. It's just, I love it. I cannot rave enough about this embroidery machine. So I'll have a link down below if you wanna go check it out. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is pick out your colors. And to be honest, this block really just has two colors. You have your leaf and you have your background. So this is where it's fun if you're gonna make multiple blocks. I really wish I would have done that. I love this little pin design so much. I wish I would have made this little treat tray with these this design. This is so cool. So. Lots of fun to be had with this. I am going to just stick with two colors because that's that's really how it looks best. Adding multiple colors, I think it'll be a little confusing if you add multiple colors on one block. So I'm just gonna stick with two. See, I can go the safe route and I can say, okay, well the maple leaf is going to be this one here and then the, ex the background is going to be this. So that's very easy to see. But I really wanna use this floral in some way. What if instead we use the floral as the maple leaf and then maybe this as the background? Let's give that a try. Let's give it a try. So just look at your pattern and it's gonna tell you the cut sizes. There are 10 different blocks for this, so make sure you refer to the pattern for the block size you're making and cut out all of those, and then I'll meet you right back here. All right, so you should have your batting cut and then have all of your cuts of materials. Like I said, there are 10, and I just like to kind of stack them up in the order they go in so I don't forget. So now, to hoop my stabilizer, I just like to roll out my stabilizer and then set the outer part of my hoop at least over it. And you need to make sure you have a little bit of hangover on each side. And then I just cut it down with my rotary cutter. And then take the hoops apart, put your outer hoop down, lay your stabilizer over the outer hoop, and then take your inner hoop and just tuck it inside and then just give a little tug on the corners to make sure it's nice and taut. It should be kind of like a drum when you're done. And that's what's nice about the stabilizer is that you can really tug on it and it's not ripping. I have used other kind of lightweight stabilizers and you give it a little tug and it just rips and it's like, well, that's not gonna work for this project. So then just tighten it up. All right, now let's get this loaded up in the machine. All right, so once you have your embroidery design loaded on your machine and you have your thread color of choice loaded and the bobbin is nice and full and everything like that, we're going to grab our hoop with the stabilizer and we're gonna insert it into the machine with nothing else. It's just the stabilizer right now. 
and now run the first step which is going to provide placement for your batting. Once you have that done, grab your cut of batting and lay it over the stitch out, making sure you're covering all four edges. And now we'll run the next step, which is going to tack down the batting. Once you have the batting tacked down, remove the hoop from the machine. And what we wanna do now is just trim down all the long edges of our batting. So we just wanna cut as close to the stitching as possible without cutting the stitching and without cutting your stabilizer. So it doesn't have to look perfect. It can be a little messy. Just do your best and be gentle. So now let's put the hoop back in the machine and the next step is going to provide placement for all the blocks. So it's pretty much just the layout of where everything's gonna go for the rest of this tutorial. Once you have all the stitch out places marked, grab pattern piece number one and we're gonna lay it right side up. This is the only one we're laying right side up, but you're gonna lay it right side up and you're gonna cover this bottom triangle all the way down here on the bottom right. Make sure you're completely covering all the edges, just like that. If you wanna use some of the Kimberbell paper tape, that's a great option here uh, to just hold this down so you don't have to worry about it moving. But now let's put this back in the machine and stitch down pattern piece one. Once you have that stitched down, pull on the triangle piece that's on the top of the stitching, so the piece that's covering the batting, pull that up and trim it off. We only want the bottom right side of that triangle. We just want this down here. So once you have that trimmed down, then grab pattern piece number two and you're gonna lay it right side down on top of pattern piece one. And you're gonna line up the long edge of pattern piece two so that it lines up with that stitch line that you just made. And again, making sure that the fabric is right side down, wrong side up. And now let's stitch down piece two. This is when I like to enlist the help of my pressing mat and you can take the hoop out, grab pattern piece two here, flip it right side up and gently finger press right along that seam. Don't pull on any of this material, it can stretch. We don't need it to. So just gently push on that seam and then grab your iron and press down just quickly on that seam. There we go. Now we're gonna stitch down placement for piece three. Now take the top triangle piece from two and trim that down right along the stitch line and then take piece three and lay it right side down. And I like to line up the shorter edge with my stitch line, so just over piece two. And now let's stitch down piece three. Now take piece three, gently lift it right side up, finger press the seam, and then use your small iron to get it nice and flat. And now let's stitch down placement for piece four. Now pull up on that top left part of your piece for piece three and trim it down. We're just keeping the bottom right triangle. Then grab pattern piece four, and we're gonna lay that right side down. Again, it's gonna be right side on top of piece three, lining up the long edge with the stitch line. And then go ahead and stitch down piece four. Now lift up piece four, finger press, and then gently press right along that seam. This is one of those blocks where none of it really looks like it's coming together until the very end, which is my favorite type of embroidered quilt block. So now let's go and stitch down placement for pattern piece five. Now pull up on the top of piece five and cut right along that stitch line. Now grab pattern piece five and you're gonna lay it right side down, right on top of pattern piece four. And again, I like to have the shorter edge. I don't know if it matters, but I have the shorter edge go right along the stitch line. And now let's stitch down piece five. Now let's flip the pattern piece right side up and finger press along the seam and then press it with your iron. And now let's stitch down placement for piece number six. Now we wanna trim down all the fabric that's to the left of that stitch line. So you might have multiple pieces of fabric here. So just trim it down to get it cleaned up as much as possible. And this will also help just reduce the bulk for later. Now take pattern piece six and you're gonna lay it right side down over all the other pattern pieces over here on the right, lining up the long edge with the stitch line. And now let's stitch down pattern piece six. Now let's flip pattern six right side up, finger press along the seam, and then just press it with your iron. And now let's stitch down placement for pattern piece seven. Now let's lift up the top left corner and trim that down right along the diagonal. And then grab your pattern piece seven. You're gonna lay it right side down over pattern piece six and lining up the long edge with the stitch line. And now let's stitch down piece seven. Now take piece seven and flip it right side up and gently press along that seam. And now let's stitch down placement for piece eight. Once you have that stitched down, we're just going to trim down all material that is to the left of that stitch line. So this is a couple different pieces. And now take pattern piece 
eight and we're gonna lay it right side down right over the center here lining up the long edge with that stitch line and now let's stitch down pattern piece eight now flip up pattern piece eight so it's right side up and then just press along that seam and now let's stitch down placement for piece nine now take the top left corner and let's just cut right along that seam and then grab pattern piece nine and lay that right side down long side against the stitch line and covering the material in the center and now let's stitch down piece nine now flip up pattern piece nine and press along the seam and now let's stitch down the placement for piece 10. now lift up the bottom left corner and trim down the fabric now we're going to grab our final block piece number 10 and lay it right side down covering the material and aligning the long edge with the stitch line and now let's go stitch down pattern piece 10. all right now flip over piece 10 and then just press that down oh this is gonna be cute this is gonna be a cute one so now we're going to put this back in the machine and we're going to run the next step which is going to just provide you with the outline of the finished block so this is just going to be a square going around all the edges and then if you'd like you can do the quilting step i highly recommend the quilting step because it really shows off that maple leaf look so the final step is just quilting the entire block all right, once you're done with all of the steps, you can remove your material from the hoop. And now I'm just gonna use a quilting ruler. And like I said, you have that outer square here. That's your finished block size. But I like to take my quilt ruler and I'm gonna line up the four and a half inch and four and a half inch mark lines with the stitches on the top and the right. And that's because I'm making the four inch by four inch block. Uh, four inch by four inch means the finished size after it's sewn together will we'll see four inches by four inches, but the size of the block before sewn together is four and a half by four and a half. And then you just pull off that. And then I'm just gonna rotate this just like that. So my overhang again is on the left and the bottom. And then I'm just gonna line up the edges that we just cut on the top and the right with the four and a half inch and four and a half inch marks on my gridded ruler. And then I'm going to cut on the left and also on the bottom. Now, when you're cutting, if you don't know rotate this so you're cutting with whichever hand is easier i can use the rotary cutter in my left or right hand equally i have no control problem using it in my left hand but if you really only feel comfortable using this in your right hand then make sure you're rotating your material so you're only cutting with your right hand i want to make sure i mention that and always close your rotary cutter don't leave it open they do fall on the floor i'm just saying be careful all right, so when we pull this out, look how stink it, oh my gosh, I love this block so, so much. I love the fabric we chose for this. This looks so good. Okay, I gotta make another treat tray. This block is cute. This is so cute. I love this. This is a fall block, but I feel like it has like a clean and like freshness to it. That's not like, this is like fall, fall, pumpkin-y, orangey. This is like fall, but like, refreshing you know what I mean like a refreshing fall I don't know how to explain that but I am like look at this I need to make another one like this don't I this is gonna look so good maybe I'll do the multicolor one this time um check out social media if I make another treat tray with that I'm gonna show it off on Instagram and Facebook because it's gonna be so cute with different colors so I hope you love making this month's vlog as much as I do. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Thank you again to Me Time for sponsoring today's video. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope that you are inspired to go make something and have a lot of fun with these patterns. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you click subscribe down below. Also make sure you hit that little bell, the little notification bell. That's gonna make sure you're notified every single time we have a new video or when we go live. For even more fun content from Oak Roots, make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. We do daily stories over there, which include unboxing, talks about books, other little mini tutorials, lots and lots of discussion over all kinds of things going on. You can also find us on TikTok and also on Reels for even more fun, kind of more random content. And if you really want to dive in for some behind the scenes content, free gifts, access to shop items before anybody else, and influence on upcoming videos, make sure you go check out Oak Alerts over on Patreon. We have a lot going on over there and it's a fun place to hang out and you are directly supporting the Oak Alerts YouTube channel. These videos could not be possible without the help of my Patreon. So thank you so, so much to everybody over there. Thank you again for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy the videos. Go make something.